in April 2005, I has been arrested, tortured, um, detained, and beaten, and put in jail. I was tortured by the Ethiopian government security agents repeatedly, especially in 2005, month of December. I was taken from my workplace. I was uh, tortured with electric, with the electric prod. Uh, in Argentina, they call it picano, and uh, it's a very, very severe form of torture. Well, of course, in the house, were beaten up. There were two women with us, and they were molested, taken in another room and molested. Since the horrors of World War II, the international community has explicitly condemned torture. Torture, like genocide and slavery, is illegal and immoral under all circumstances, without exception. Torture is defined in international law as the severe infliction of pain by a state agent, pain that can be either uh, physical or psychological, for the purpose of interrogation or punishment. Torture by the United States against uh, U.S.-held detainees was termed by, presidents, by President Bush and Vice President Cheney as enhanced interrogation techniques. But what it really was was torture and it included the use of waterboarding, which was to make a person believe that they're drowning um, and that they would be so desperate that they would then reveal information. Despite the UN mandate, torture still persists. That's why 50 countries have now ratified the optional protocol to the Convention Against Torture, or OPCAT as a mechanism to implement the international ban on torture. Countries that have ratified OPCAT include Great Britain, Germany, France, Australia, Brazil, Ireland, South Africa, and Sweden. Unfortunately, the United States is one of the few major democracies that have not yet agreed to sign OPCAT, and we need to change that. Because what prisons and jails need is light, light, and more light. And that's what OPCAT would bring. It would bring in independent outside monitors to take a look at what, what's going on. Well, the major purpose is, uh, is prevention, is not so much reacting to the uh, uh, events of torture that have already happened, but creating systems by which the, the commission of torture and cruel and human and degrading treatment is preventing, prevented from happening in the first place. OPCAT uses transparency to protect against the use of torture. It does so by requiring each ratifying country to develop its own independent body to oversee its detention facilities to help ensure that cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment, including torture, does not occur. Allegations of serious abuse in some instances amounting to torture, continue to be raised about life in U.S. prisons. Two common practices in particular need urgent attention. The use of long-term solitary confinement and the shackling of pregnant women prisoners during childbirth. The shackling of pregnant women prisoners and girls is pervasive in this country. When a woman is in labor, it is a very common practice to shackle at least one of her legs to the bed, sometimes both legs to the bed, sometimes a hand and a leg. And what happens when a woman is shackled, especially during childbirth, is that she can't really move her body. She can't facilitate the birth of her child. Especially harmful is the use of prolonged solitary confinement which many studies show can lead to insanity and which the Council of Europe and the United Nations consider to be a form of torture. The United States alone remains as the only developed country that makes widespread use of solitary confinement. The closest approximation I could come up with is if you were to lock yourself in your bathroom 
for days, weeks, months on end. Uh, you wouldn't be able to have any conversations with anybody. You wouldn't be able to watch TV. You wouldn't be able to listen to a radio. If you were lucky, you would be able to read a book. And you would stay there 23 hours a day. You might, and I say might, be able to walk outside into another bathroom as your recreation and pace back and forth. And you would do that day in and day out for weeks and months and years. We have people in this country who have been subject to those conditions for decades. Currently more than 25,000 prisoners are in solitary confinement in the U.S. By ratifying OPCAT, the United States would be establishing for the first time a national independent mechanism for overseeing the conditions and conduct of U.S. prisons. It would allow us to shed light on our own detention system and help end inhumane practices such as the extreme isolation and the shackling of women during childbirth. We must stop these practices here at home and we must encourage other countries to end even worse practices abroad. OPCAT is an important way to do that. The ratification by the United States of, uh, of the optional protocol, because the United States is already a party to the Convention Against Torture, would have a very, very uh, powerful effect in persuading many other countries to, to sign uh, and ratify the protocol. Conversely, the decision not to uh, ratify, if it's made public, etc., uh, has the, the exactly opposite effect, because many countries where the OPCAT is very necessary will say, why should I sign if the United States doesn't sign? I, I think that all Americans could probably agree that our government needs to be accountable. It needs to be accountable to us, uh, and it needs to be accountable to its laws. Unfortunately, unless you have any, someone looking at what happens in these places of detention, it's very easy to hide what you're doing. It's very easy not to practice what you preach. By bringing transparency to detention facilities worldwide, including here in the United States, OPCAT will dramatically reduce the opportunities for abusive treatment. Well, I, I think the U.S. should sign and ratify OPCAT first and foremost to participate in an, inter in an international uh, enterprise to reduce and eventually abolish torture worldwide. But second, because it would be a recognition that the United States has an unfinished business with regards to treatment of detainees in this country. And uh, that the United States has a lot to learn from the way other democratic societies uh, treat their uh, prison population. Cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment can only exist behind the walls of secrecy. OPCAT is designed to break through those walls. There's a role for you here. You can go to our website and sign the statement directed to President Obama asking him to sign the optional protocol on the Convention Against Torture. You can also bring this issue to your congregation and ask them to join you and to join us in urging President Obama to sign the optional protocol. Together, we can end torture forever.